grade one. Mike Pullen's here, Hampton Park Honey. And uh, it is October 30 here in the Chicago suburbs. It's a surprisingly warm day. These past two days have hit record highs uh, in uh, around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, extremely windy. And the temperatures will be plummeting, but even though it's nice and warm and I could be out here with short sleeves, I'm still in the process of preparing my hives for winterizing at this point because the reality is it's not going to stay this warm. Actually, two days from now it's going to be plummeting uh, pretty uh, considerably. Now I'm going to try something new this winter uh, for preparing, preparing my hives for winterizing. Yes, I am still going to do one more oxalic acid treatment for my hives. Uh, the burrow mites have been a problem, actually one hive, uh, the queen got weakened even, and um, they, uh, the whole colony absconded on me, so uh, it's full of honey, so I'm going to actually distribute that honey among the other hives so that they have ample, uh, every frame is full, and they, they have ample food reserves for the winter time. But th that I still consider an extremely important, if not the single most important thing, uh, to get them ready because if they're sick with hives we know that high percentage of mites equals a dead colony every time. However, that, well, that being under control, the next problem that uh, beekeepers face in the cooler climates is actual uh, death from, uh, essentially it could be cold related in a way. Uh, you know, of course, if, um, if it's not well uh, insulated, if you've got a lot of drafts in the hives and the cluster or it gets too cold too long, there can be problems with them not moving around in the hive, their cluster's too tight to even get to new food reserves and they can start to then localize because they are too stressed out from the cold to even move a couple inches over. Uh, the other problem that can happen with a lot of beekeepers is having condensation develop in the hive and uh, condensation is a problem because of course there's their natural body heat and especially the clustering will generate moisture in the air and if the moisture condenses on the top of the hive then water drips down on them and it doesn't matter then what happens I mean if you they always say wet bees are dead bees and so if they're getting dripped on in the winter time they will not generate enough heat to uh, keep themselves alive so condensation kills them now, uh, there have been all kinds of practices in the past of doing condensation management that they would put in, um, you know, condensation boards on the top and uh, sometimes some granulated sugar that they can use for, for both reserve eating and for um, absorbing extra moisture so it doesn't drip on them. But there's still, uh, you know, some issues where the, the condensation can still happen and beekeepers have typically kept uh, upper entrance on the top of the hive and a bottom entrance on the bottom to prevent uh, or circulate the air and prevent too much moisture from going there but that essentially combats their ability to keep the temperatures nice and warm inside. There's going to be a compromise and that can still then uh, be a stress on them and have them over exhaust themselves with uh, the clustering and the shivering. So. In this box, I have bought, it's only been around for a couple of years, but I just learned about it from, it's called the Hive Hugger Principle. And this is where I'm going to create for three of my hives a condensation hive. And it's going to work on a new principle. It's something that mimicking the idea of the science of bees living in natural trees, they find that condensation, they know, happens when the moisture in the air hits a temperature equivalent to the dew point. And so if you can have the upper insulation much higher than the rest of the walls, you can avoid condensation at the top because it does never gets cold enough for that. Whereas condensation can happen in the corners and along the walls where it will not kill the bees. And that's what this idea of the hive hugger is. Trees, if they're living in a tree in nature, if you think about it, they have a hole in the tree and there's a cavity in the tree and uh, the trees have an R value of, oh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but it's roughly, you know, seven, eight, something like that 
for the insulation factor. However, above them, the tree is essentially infinite insulation because of the wood that just keeps on going and going and going. So condensation is not a problem in nature and they only have one hole. So we're all working against that with the two hole top bottom thing with ventilation, letting cold in, not cool. So this here in this box, I have bought three of these kits for a two frame deep hive and it is essentially insulation for the top and for the sides of a two deep box hive which is how I have it with uh, with my hives is two boxes of uh, 10 frames deep ones not the shallow ones not that or the not the Illinois medium supers and the whole idea here is that I am creating okay I'm pulling this out for the first time so I'm looking at this this is the top panel not super thick I mean you look at it it's like okay well a foam board could be used on this well foam boards have what insulation of about four or five or something like that an R value maybe a little higher this baby this is what they use for refrigerators actually it's the same insulation that the Yeti company uses for their amazing uh, ones these are vacuum panels so this thing has an R value of 32 that's about the equivalent of six foam boards or so or at least six inches of those things and so it fits inside an inner cover and so I'm gonna put that on the top and then on the sides here pulling these out okay just as they explained it there are these side panels that have an R value of about I think they said 6.9 for them standard insulation if I was living in northern Minnesota or someplace where it gets stupid cold there's even heavier ones available but these go around the sides of the top of the hive and they are going to uh, as soon as I figure it out I think checkerboard in a way and lock in I'll figure this out sooner or later but they will go around the sides of the the hive and then oh yeah here's the here's the side ones I was holding two end pieces so they're just going to come together nice and uh, snug like this and go around the side of it and it's going to have a lower R value so that condensation can happen here that will keep the moisture away from the bees it will also actually give bees access to water in the winter time that's still something that they need and they don't have to go out of the hive for desperate measures to get water in extreme cold. And so, uh, once I put these things together, I'm gonna show you how it looks on the hives, and then uh, we will uh, uh, get them ready and uh, see how it plays against a couple of the other hives that I will not insulate so well, although I will still make the principle of trying this elimination of the upper entrance hole, and I'm going to also probably work on a little bit of improvised insulation uh, by perhaps putting another empty box with some kind of other insulation on it over the uh, the all already existing uh, boxes just so that we do eliminate top and uh, heat loss and condensation ability. So, so we'll stay tuned. Actually, before I even turn this thing off and ship through the end part I want to show you at least what my hives look like uh, this year is a double nuke I am NOT going to put it on that one I'm actually going to maybe just put a, uh, a standard insulated cover on this because the bees there's actually a colony on the left and a colony on the right and so it is a little more tight already they tend to do a little better with that and so there's a little bit of a self insulation there but this is the hive that died out, uh, so or they absconded, I mean, and uh, so I'm going to move their recess over. And then the other guys are just uh, standard boxes here that are uh, two deeps. There's one on the other side that was an oopsie hive that ended up uh, happening because to avoid a swarm, actually, they could really benefit from uh, an extra uh, box of honey because you can see there's only a super on there and a deep but they didn't build it up fast enough so they will appreciate the the uh, lost hive that, that I'm gonna give them a lot of food and then I will show you the finished product now with a two deep frame hive I have just uh, 
to show how the assembly is going. I have just treated these guys for mites. Uh, one thing I'm also doing for all my entrance reducers is I'm actually inverting it so the uh, small hole is present and it's on the top of the board rather than on the underside on the bottom. And that's just because as bees naturally die off in the winter time, they're gonna pile up a little bit. And I'm gonna work on uh, opening this up on a nicer, warmer winter day to scoop out some of the bees. Look at this, it's like almost November and there's pollen on this one. It's so cool, they're still bringing it in. And, uh, but anyways, the bees do pile up on their bodies and uh, this will allow that the entrance to not get blocked up. Yeah, they could just crawl over the dead bodies if they're not dragging them out fast enough. It sounds morbid, but uh, they don't care. They're not humans. And uh, then I essentially have my two boxes. I put a little bit of a shim on here just because I put a, a bit of a extra food under the cover just to provide it. I'm gonna plug up that hole though. That, that is something that I'm uh, gonna take care of for it. But then the way it works is this top part of the insulation, the crown for this hive hugger just fits right on top of the hive like that. And that is insulation that would make your attic jealous. There's R32 insulation in that little panel. And then I'm just gonna uh, cover it around with the other stuff and, uh, and put a top cover on and we're good. Okay, it's later in the day and let me show you what's going on. So things are set up, but there was one small setback for me. I uh, had these kinds of metal stands uh, for the hives and it turns out that with the hive boxes uh, in there, there wasn't enough room between the box and the edge of this thing that's sitting up there to have the insulation wrap around it. So I had to uh, run out to the big box store and get some cinder blocks uh, to replace some of those metal stands, which no biggie. It's uh, not that I'm hopelessly in love with them, but uh, I just had them. And, and as a matter of fact, I probably could look into more insulated uh, options for the future because metal really conduct cold uh, well. But back to where we were. So this is how they set everything up there. Now we've got the, the wraps around the, the whole hive. Uh, they even provide a little uh, tape to help uh, hold it together. You know, year after year, I'm sure so any other strong sturdy tape, it works just to hold the pieces together that are fit uh, to uh, uh, kind of, you know, jigsaw into each other. But the, um, then the, the other thing they provided was a strap that you could actually uh, put around the, the hive to hold it together with a little extra security. And then for these things, as far as the, the top goes, there's even a thing where inside these covers, all right, so this is how the setup is. The lower R insulation is around the side, which should keep it nice and snug. I have an inner cover. Yeah, I just plugged it with a little bit of a cloth, so it's nothing too big. But the high 32R insulation panel sits on top of it. But if I pull that off, I can do that with one hand. Then they also provided a little film of insulation that you could put on the inside of the hive, just inside the hole of the top cover to also minimize heat loss right there. So that's kind of resting between the frames and uh, the top there. But then you essentially rest this on top. I scooted this to make sure it's flush up against the top of the box. And then you can actually get a here telescoping cover on top of it and make sure it's all snug and secure then. And of course, uh, your brick to prevent it from uh, getting blown off in stronger winds. And here we are. So three hives with hive huggers. One, two, and three. And um, yeah, I still have to put the top on this guy. But uh, that will hopefully hold. And the other principles, like for since I have a couple of hives 
that don't have it the whole idea is just to provide heavier top insulation so i'm gonna work on that to at least minimize heat loss through the top as best i can and the hard part is that i shouldn't open these all winter um i know we like to sometimes check in on them and take a peek on a warmer winter day to see if there is enough honey reserves or do we have to add sugar but the science behind this is is that with the temperatures that should be held with this kind of insulation close to a nice ambient even 70 degrees they have found with studying this particular insulation when they put a glass panel or plexiglass panel inner cover on top that a peak in the middle of winter even in cold weathers they were not even clustering so it is that insulated that they can actually manage with just normal activity thermal generation and that will greatly reduce how much honey is getting consumed i think i have a really good amount anyways so i'm not that worried last year i had about as much for them and those that survived did um not need any supplemental sugar really so uh, but it still be a little bit a little bit of a nail biter to do it a different way and just trust the system and watch to see how the system works but that is the hive hugger model of insulation i like the idea i like the science behind it because for so many of us there's this well we try this and this works and we try this and i don't know if it works better than that and i do this but i you don't do that and you do this and i don't do that um this actually seems to have gone back to uh uh you know research based on Seeley's studies of uh of tree insulation that that uh wild bees would um feral bees would use for uh their selection of hives as well as uh even watching uh with nowadays there are published studies with in hive temperature and humidity monitors so that they could actually put them in multiple parts throughout the hive and they were they were studying how this kind of form of insulation in a condensation hive can uh really manage the uh the temperature in a good way and the humidity so we'll see but that is the fall prep